Let me tell you guys something. Boy, am I glad for college football to be f basically almost here. The AP poll has come out. Of course, our top four is Georgia, Ohio State, Oregon, and Texas, with Alabama rounding out the top five. Ole Miss at six, Notre Dame seven, Penn State eight, the defending national champions, Michigan at nine, Florida State, the team that did not make the playoffs last year at 10, Missouri 11, Utah 12, LSU 13, Clemson 14, Tennessee at 15, Oklahoma at 16, Oklahoma State at 17, Kansas State at 18, Miami of all teams at 19, Texas A&M at 20, Arizona at 21, Kansas at 22, uh, USC at 23, NC State snuck in there somehow at 24, and number 25 is Iowa. So basically the AP and the coaches poll are, you know, pretty much the same. Um, there's like no differences in teams, but for the first, you know, two months or so of the season, we're going to use the AP poll, obviously. You know, and we do have some nice ranked games for week one. We got one ranked team in week zero. But we'll talk about week zero next week. We'll talk about all the games and stuff like that next week. Um, just to kind of give you a little bit of a refresher, a lot of stuff happened the past year or so. A lot of stuff happened. You know, the Pac-12 is basically dead. Yes, the Pac-2 is a thing. It exists. That's why the CW picked up games from the Pac-2. So Oregon State and Washington State, at least they get something. You know, they got a deal with the Mountain West for football and the West Coast Conference for basically, or at least basketball. That's about it. Of course, you know, the Big 12 has taken on a number of new teams with the departure of Texas and Oklahoma to the SEC, which basically started all this conference realignment in the first place. You know, Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, BYU, UCF, Cincinnati, Colorado, Houston. Yeah, all those guys. But the, but the, 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 the four Pac-12 schools that came over, you know, Colorado, who's very much very hyped, you know, still with Neon Sanders hyping up this team who's going up against a North Dakota State team that, you know, it's still North Dakota State, but that's neither here nor there. Um, in regards to the FCS a little bit, um, I'll talk about the FCS a little bit later, but it's maybe a long video, to be completely honest with you. The hype around the Big 12 this year is going to be very interesting. Again, nine conference games, 16 teams, four new faces in the Big 12. You never know what's going to happen in this wild, wild conference. Now, now that Texas and Oklahoma are gone, especially, you know, for most Big 12 teams, Oklahoma being gone, you know, as they thorn in their sides, you know, now the, the, the sky's the limit for the conference. The sky is the limit. Who knows what in the world can happen because it's gonna be a it's gonna be a weird season. It's gonna be a weird, weird season. But you know, you know, Colorado may not be that team, you know, just to talk about them real quick. I know they have Travis Hunter, I know they have Stuart Sanders, but they still, you know, there's still not enough pieces for me to say, yep, this is a team that can get on the map. Yeah, they had some Pretty crazy victories early on last year, but you know the hype died down once they got smacked around by Oregon. The hype train could get derailed in week number one, so we will see. Um, before we get into you know the SEC and the Big Ten and everything like that, we have the twelve team playoff this year. Now. Obviously, I am a known hater of, you know, the 12-team playoff structure, but I'm going to have to adapt to it. Same thing I'm going to have to adapt with, you know, it was the same thing I did with the NFL. I adapted. I eventually grew to like it. But college football is a different beast than the NFL. College football is less about parity. It's less about parity 
and more about dominant teams being dominant. So you kind of figure where I'm kind of wanting to go with this. I wanted an 18 playoff. I wanted an 18 playoff. You know, I think picking two teams, you know, like a Florida State, you know, last year and a Georgia last year, plus the five conference champ, plus the five best, rather the six best conference champions. You know, I think that would have worked out pretty well last year. But, you know, it is what it is. Would have preferred, you know, it be the top six conference champions regardless, but it's going to be the top five conference champions and seven at large bids. So, you know, again, seven at large bids, five conference champions. So there could be a chance that somebody misses out. Could be a chance that somebody from one of these bigger conferences misses out. So, you know, there's that. Um, you know, the SEC now is going to be very intriguing with Texas and Oklahoma. You have the team that just went to the, you know, the college football playoff last year in Texas coming on over. You have a Oklahoma team that potentially – that potentially could be, you know, something serious. They could be something serious. Um, you know, I know, you know, Oklahoma, you know, hasn't had the greatest time under Brett Venables, but ultimately I think things will go a lot more swimmingly for Oklahoma. I think they'll be fine. They'll be fine. You know, I think they'll be fine. Of course, the boys down in Georgia, are looking to get back into it. They're looking to get back into it. They start with Clemson in Atlanta with Carson Beck, who is, for some reason, a Heisman Trophy candidate to start the season, which is weird to me, but all right. All right. That defense of Georgia's is still very intriguing. That defense is still very intriguing. I think there's something there. You know, there's something there, you know, that we all can, you know, be proud of. Be very proud of. Um, of course, Alabama. Nick Saban is no longer here, so you know, who do you turn to now? Who do you turn to now? You know, obviously, you still got Jalen Milrow, who's you know, he he didn't have the the like the greatest season last year. You know, he didn't have the most perfect season, but he's still. Led Alabama to the playoff. Still led Alabama to the playoffs. And with Kalen DeBoer at the helm now for Alabama, it's going to be intriguing to see you know what this basically this you know this team you know this 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 group that he brought over from Washington got them to the playoffs last year. You know DeBoer is a really good coach, so you know he knows how to win. He knows how to get things done. But at the same time, at the same time, you know, Georgia's still there. Kirby Smart, defense of Georgia. Carson Beck, you know, no Brock Bowers, but still a very threatening Georgia team. Texas is now, you know, in the mix of things. I know they lost. I know my horns lost um, running back. Uh, you know, they lost the running back. Same thing with Texas a They also lost the running back, you know. So, Yeah. To season in the injuries, but ultimately, at the end of the day, Alabama is still in this thing. I know people are, you know, probably going to hype up, you know, Missouri or LSU or Tennessee, but ultimately, I don't think those teams, you know, really have much of a chance at the moment. Because you know, the thing, the thing is, is it's, it's just kind of weird, you know, to really, you know, you have Garrett Nussmeyer, you know, as the quarterback for LSU. Not a lot of confidence. Um, Nico Aliami, uh, uh, Ami Oliva. I hope I'm saying that name right. I, I, I don't have confidence. I, I, you know, Josh Heibel, great coach and all. Brian Kelly, great coach and all. I just don't have hype in these two guys. They could prove me wrong during the season, but ultimately, I just don't. I just don't see it right now. I just don't see it. Yeah, you still got Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss, but again, 
Ole Miss is, you know, more having a more favorable schedule that could get them into the playoffs. Again, this is this is an Ole Miss team that, you know, won 10 games last year and, you know, did not make the pull, did not make the plays when they needed to against, you know, Georgia or Alabama. Yeah. I I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I really don't. For the ACC, oh my goodness. You've added Cal, Stanford, and an SMU team that is not getting money, but is also getting money at the same time, you know, for the first couple of years that they're in the ACC. I don't know. I don't know how this is all working out for SMU, but the money, the they had the money and they bought their way in to the SEC. They bought their way in. And kudos to SMU for getting back into the power conference. Kudos to them. They got back in. Um, but at the end of the day, it's still it is still a Florida State ACC to lose at this point. Miami has to prove it to me. I just don't see it right now. I just don't feel it. Clemson had a you know bad year last year. They're going back to being, you know, a Clemson team that, you know, you know, wasn't it wasn't, it wasn't the greatest, you know. Florida State now has DJ Uilagale, a quarterback, which is crazy. Crazy stuff. Again, that transfer portal is insane. The transfer portal is very much insane. I, I genuinely do not know how the transfer portal got out of hand like this. I don't know how it got out of hand. I don't I don't know at all how it got out of hand. You know, at all. It's crazy to me. It's it's it, it it's it's really, really crazy. It's really crazy how it just completely got out of hand. Um but yeah, I just don't see it. Mike Norvell, you know, as long as DJ Ulaka like can, you know, not be what he was at Clemson, I, I think things will be fine. I think things will be fine. For you know, for the for for the Seminoles, and there's other, and there's other teams that you know I do want to talk about as well, but we'll get to that point when we get to that point. Um, let's see the Big Ten, yeah, the Big Ten. So the defending champions. Now they have they have Alex Orgy quarterback, no Jim Harbaugh. He got suspended by the NCAA anyway, but he's but, he, <laughs> but it, uh, quite an irony is that you know he's gonna show up at you know some of the games anyway. You know, so now Sharon Moore will take over for the Wolverines. It's gonna be intriguing to see, you know, how in the world is this team going to, you know, how in the world is this team going to, you know go back to the college football playoffs with you know with that without the without the pieces you know last year I I don't know I don't know man you tell me tell me but yeah it this is Alex Orgy's team you know and Donovan Edwards will be right behind him so but Ohio State is the presumptive favorite with Will Howard at quarterback. Now, Will Howard, you know, has been pretty interesting over the past couple of years. Pretty interesting. He's not a quarterback that I would say, you know, really, you know, he's that guy. But he makes big plays when it matters, you know. But he also makes mistakes when it matters, too. So I wonder if Ryan Day, you know, can get those kinks sorted out for him. But I don't know. We will see. Again, I, I, I'm not confident in a lot of quarterback classes, you know, for various reasons over the past couple of years. And I've said this time and time again when it comes to, you know, you know, I don't, I don't talk about the NFL draft at all, you know, once the NFL ends the offseason. But, you know, a lot of quarterback classes to me over the past, you know, like five or six years have felt really, really weak. You know, and I feel like, and I fear that's going to be the same thing, you know, again, 
but I don't know. For you know, for Penn State, you know, Drew Aller is still you know still here, but Penn State has to get over the hump. I feel like the biggest hurdle, you know, if this were the four-team you know playoff era, still. We could talk about Penn State, you know, trying to get over the hump of Ohio State and, Penn, and, and Michigan again, and they have to do that again. But all Penn State has to do is win, you know, like 10 games. All they need to do is just take care of business. But the Big Ten has added four newcomers. Four. The team that went to the national championship last year and Washington no longer has all the guys. You know, Caleb DeBoer is gone. Michael Penix Jr., gone. Oregon is basically the other team that's favored in the Big Ten with Dan Lanning leading the way yet again. Yet again. Um, an interesting quarterback room with Dylan Gabriel coming on over. Another transfer, I know, I know. Crazy stuff, right? Um, and this... Oregon team, you know, a lot of people are very, very high on them. But, again, we will see how that goes. USC still, you know, you know, USC has been added along with UCLA and, again, Washington, um, Lincoln Riley and company, you know, wonder what they're going to do this year. They got to get, they got to get it together. You know, they've had some, they've had some interesting results over the past few years with Riley. You know, or, but you know, ultimately at the end of the day, I, I wonder. You know, is USC going to make uh, make the plays necessary to finally get over the hump? So yeah, you notice that all the teams in the top twenty-five are well, all the teams in the top twenty-five currently. Are well, they're all they're all power four teams. I know, so it's very hard to consider a group of five representative at the moment. It's very hard to consider a group of five rep, but I don't know. Um, It's very hard to consider a group of five representative, but I don't. I, I just don't know right now. You know, I don't. I'm, I really don't. I really don't know because, like, what what am, what am what am I supposed to what am I supposed to say about a group of five rep? You know, I, I, I just can't. I just can't think of one. I really can't. I can't think of one off the top of my head right now. So. Um, I, do do you guys know who to pick? Because I genuinely do not know who to pick. You know, for the G five rep, uh, I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say it. I'm just gonna put them in. Um, gonna put them in here, and I'm just gonna you know really kind of wing it here with my G five rep real quick. And my G five rep is Boise State again. I just don't have a strong, you know set of confidence in the group five this year because this is really you know again the transfer portal has kind of made things a little bit weird so forgive me if i'm thinking you know you know something completely stupid but i just a lot of people are saying boise state so i'm just gonna have to go with the bandwagon here um you know i, I don't i don't know what to say so i'm going to you know, again, state my, you know, power four champions real quick. My, again, first up is Florida State. That's extremely obvious. I do not I do not have confidence in the ACC. In fact, I think the new additions will struggle. Stanford is not that great. Cal's not that great. And SMU really should be here. But they are. They are. Um. 
you know, I, I don't, I don't know why. I don't know why, you know, anybody could consider anything else. But whatever, man. Whatever. Um. When it comes to you know the Big Twelve, it's kind of a toss up. It's kind of a weird toss up. So forgive me if I just don't really have you know really any sort of confidence in anything. But I'm thinking my Big Twelve representative you know will be Utah. I don't know. They have a roster that you know still looks very good. I think that will be enough to you know get over the hump of other other you know of teams in 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 the B twelve. I just I don't know. I don't know. Um the SEC is going to be, you know, I feel like this year it will be Georgia. I know. I really wanted to pick my Longhorns, but I think you know, the Michigan game is going to be a big, you know, it's going to be a big key factor into really kind of figuring out things, you know, because at, at, at the moment, I just, I just don't know. I just don't know. I just don't know because the SEC is going to be very hard to really kind of, you know, pick and choose from so so forgive me if I, I'm being you know not extremely biased or anything you know I'm not gonna be extremely biased because again it's a 12 team playoff and not not anything else I wish I wish it was but we're probably going to see Texas and Georgia in the SEC championship, maybe Alabama. Again, there's no divisions anymore for most conferences. The Sun Belt is the only one with divisions. Um, so you know who can match up with Georgia? I think Texas will be the team. And I know again, Texas still has some questions on defense. You know because they got they got they really got smacked around by Washington in the CFP last year. They really got smacked around. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Again, the Big 12, again, like I said, it will be, I think Utah will be the representative coming out. But I think the other team that will come out of the Big 12, and we'll talk about my other playoff teams in a moment, will be um, Oklahoma State. I feel like, they again, they got, you know, the team that can kind of compete. You know, I feel like the, the Big 12 is clearly the third best, you know, a lot of people – Consider the Big 12 the third best conference, you know, right now. So I feel like if that's going to be, you know, that. Um, for the Big 10, again, I feel like it's going to be Oregon versus Ohio State. Now, I don't know why people are so high on both of these teams. But at the end of the day, I feel like Oregon has, the you know, the materials you know, the, they look like the team that could be a powerhouse in the future. So we will see. Again, my, my again because not only because you know it's kind of hard to really talk about the G five because of the NIL stuff. You know, kind of you know, kind of making things kind of weird. And then you know, there's just not really a team that kind of separates themselves from the pack at the moment. A lot of people are saying, oh, well, it could be a team from the American. Again, like Army joined the American this year. That's that's crazy, you know. Um, I don't know. The Conference USA is still, you know, bottom of the barrel conference. You can't really trust them. The MAC, not that great. The Mountain West could be interesting. They got a lot of Power 5 matchups in Week 1 that are worth watching. And we'll talk about those, you know, when that time comes. But again, I just I just don't really have you know much, and 
for whoever, you, you know, I don't know who's going to face off against Florida State. Maybe Louisville again. I think Louisville could face off against Florida State. I'm just not confident in the ACC at all. Clearly at number four behind the SEC Big Ten and Big 12. I feel like Florida State should easily take care of business, you know, and, and, and you know, take care of that stuff there. So um, there's also Notre Dame. So, you know, I know, I, I know, I know what people are going to say. Well, you know, Notre Dame, you know, isn't really, you know, isn't really that, you know, isn't really, you know, that good. You know, they aren't, they aren't that great or anything, you know, it's Notre Dame, you know, it's Notre Dame. What, what is Notre Dame going to do? Notre Dame is going to do Notre Dame things, and by Notre Dame things, I mean they should take care of business pretty easily with the, with the schedule they have. You know, um, you know their quarterback is going to be Riley Leonard, and he's a pretty good quarterback. Again, Notre Dame returns a lot of key pieces. They were pretty. They were pretty interesting last year, and they could be pretty interesting again this year. And the schedule again is pretty favorable for them. Pretty favorable to where they could win ten games. And really, all you need is nine or ten wins. Now, again, due to the twelve team playoff, you know Notre Dame. If they were a five, six, seven, or eight, they would get a home playoff game, and that's it. They would not, you know. They, they would get a home playoff game because they're not in the conference. They only get a top four spot. Um, so the fact that Riley Leonard transferred over from Duke is going to be something to watch over the course of the season. Uh, so, yeah, why don't we just reveal you know, my other playoff teams right now? Uh, my other playoff teams are as follows. Texas, a uh, Texas Alabama, Ohio State. Ole Miss, Notre Dame, Michigan, and Oklahoma State. Now, I kind of wanted to be a little bit more balanced than other people. You know, I know, again, a lot of people are going to, you know, try and put, you know, you know, basically pretty much every, you know, a lot of SEC and a lot of Big Ten teams in, but I think we're going to get a Notre Dame sneak. I think we're going to get an Oklahoma State sneak. You know, I think we're going to get at least another B12 team or another or Notre Dame coming in or maybe even potentially an ACC team. But a lot of these spots are going to be held up by the Big 12 or rather by the Big 10 in the SEC. That's just that's just facts, you know, with the way the 12 team playoff is structured, um, you know, similar to the FCS. That's kind of how the FCS does it, you know, with the way the playoffs works, you know, as you all know, you know. There's going to be a lot of, you know, FCS teams in the playoffs, you know, from like two or three conferences, and then the rest have like one bid. So, you know, it's kind of hard. Kind of hard to really, you know, talk about the playoffs because, you know, again, it's so weird that we went from four to 12, like that quick. Um, so I know what you're thinking. Um what about my Heisman Trophy winner? Um, I, I, I genuinely do not have a strong confidence pick this year, so I'm going to give it to a guy that definitely can do this type of thing because he can back it up now. Again, I've listed a few of the, you know, and these are based off of odds, by the way. So I've listed a few of the um, of the presumptive candidates, but ultimately, I just I just feel like this award should be pretty easy, and it should go to Dylan Gabriel pretty easily. Like, I'm not confident in the rest of these picks. Jackson Dart, are you serious? Now, Quint Ewers, you know. He's good. I just don't see it. You know, I just don't see it. I, I feel like Dylan Gabriel's the, the best candidate here. Will Howard, are you, are you, somebody must be smoking something. Will Howard as a Heisman candidate. 
This should be Dylan Gabriel's to take, no question. Talented, star-like in nature. He can put up numbers. He can put up, you know, the things that make a and make things, you know, very interesting. Now, as far as my, you know, national championship prediction goes, I'm going to be real with you. The 12 team playoff is is hard to predict. It's going to be hard to predict when we get to December 8th. It's going to be very hard to really, you know, kind of soak it in that oh yeah, this is happening. Now, you <laughs> know, a lot of people are going to say, "Oh, well, you're just you're just saying this and that and yada yada yada." But I'm going to go with the team that I feel the most confident in, you know. My bias, you know, is telling me, you know, to say Texas, but I just don't see it yet. I feel like it's not it, it it will be it will not be this year. It will be next year. I feel like Texas, you know, still, you know, needs something. But I feel like I could be proven wrong. I could be proven wrong. You know, uh, I know I'll be proven wrong at some point. Ohio State, well, I have confidence in, you know, the great defense and everything like that. And, you know, I'm just still kind of mixed on Will Howard, to be completely honest with you. I think Dan Lanning is building something crazy. And so my national championship prediction is going to be the Oregon Ducks winning their first title. I know. I know. Watch this be completely wrong at the end of the season, and all of you are like, oh, my God. This is one of the worst predictions of all time. I'm just feeling way more confident about Oregon's roster than I do Ohio State's. You know, a lot of people, again, are saying these are the two best teams in the country aside from Georgia. You know, or at least a lot of people are saying Ohio State's the best team in the country. I just don't see it. Um they can get past Michigan, and then they have to play Michigan, you know, two straight times, you know, because that's just how the playoff works. You know, I don't know. Um, really quick, FCS. I know I don't really have, you know, too much to say about the FCS this year. I just, I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of eh, on, on things, you know, you know, with the way. The way this team has been dominating over the past two years, I feel like it's going to be the same thing this year. So, as kind of expected, my FCS champion prediction is going to be the South Dakota State Jackrabbits, I know. But don't be surprised if you see a team like Montana State, who is favored against New Mexico in Week 0, or North Dakota State, or Montana you know, against... You know, the, the big schools are in the FCS, are, you know, looking big and dominant. The smaller schools, you know, are kind of being left to dust yet again. The FCS's quality has gone down, you know, even further. You know, you know the 9 out of 11 years of, of the good old boys in North Dakota winning, you know, the, the Bison winning the title, you know, for 9 of the past 11 years. And then... You know, the two straight by now, the Jackrabbits of uh, Brookings, you know, kind of, you know, wavers my interest in the FCS just a little bit. Um, you know, and it doesn't help that the FCS kickoff, you know, is no longer really a game that matters anymore. You know, it, and it doesn't help, you know, that the HBCUs are still doing their own thing, you know, and not, you know, Getting to the playoffs, but you know, again, they choose money at bowls over playing, you know, for a national championship that loses money. And that game is now going to be on a Monday night because of the college football playoffs, you know. And the NFL basically saying, Oh, we want like, we want all that money, we want we want all the primetime windows, you know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day. I'm going to be real with you. This is kind of hard for me to really kind of, you know, really sink my teeth into because, you know, again, the 12 team playoff is just having me completely perplexed, flummoxed, confused, and all sorts of, you know, 
emotions that I just don't, I'm just genuinely surprised at. How did we get here from 412? And we might even go to 14 in two years. I don't know how we got here, but I'm ready for this new era of college football. I am. Um, it's going to be an adjustment period for all of us, you know, seeing, you know, Big 12 after dark instead of Pac 12 after dark, seeing Pac 12 games, or rather the Pac 2 on the CW, along with the ACC games. So I know people are still, you know, whining about that, but hey, at least you're on linear television. The SEC's new deal with ESPN fully kicks in. And same thing with the Big Ten's deal with, you know, Fox. BC and CBS fully kicking in. It's going to be a weird season. Let's get it started. I'll see you all on August the 20th to talk about week zero. Take care, you know, as far as college football goes. But for the rest of you, you know where we'll be on Saturday, 630, right here. Talk about the IFL National Championship. So, oh my goodness, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to talk about the, the National Championship of the IFL, man. I'm ready. Ready for that game. Oh my goodness. But we want a hell of a game on Saturday. So, until then, Big Boy Sports signing out. And we'll see this video. You know, it's 10 o'clock at night on a Monday. So, you will see it on Tuesday. Take care.